Hello YouTube, and welcome back to the Loose Transistor channel. I'm your host, Lucas, and we're here in the Loose Transistor cave one more time because I am gonna teach you guys uh, how to flash Betaflight 3.2.1 and how to work with the new configurator, just like I promised in the last video where I did the tuning for the Apex. So what I got here is a brand new inbox CL Racing F4 that I am going to be flashing and doing some basic configuration, just like I do in all my other quads, and I'm gonna walk you guys through it step by step. Now that uh, Betaflight has somewhat stabilized to a degree. Uh, 3.2 is fairly good to go. 3.2.1 basically has some bug fixes, some really really minor bug fixes, but uh, I figured now that it's somewhat stable I'm gonna show you guys what's new with the new configurator, how to get it all set up, how to get it flushed, and uh, hopefully that will help some of you guys there if you get stuck. So let's uh, let's get started with it. So what we're gonna need here of course is the flight controller right here and we're gonna need Betaflight Configurator 3.2.2. So I'm gonna teach you guys right now how to get that set up on your computer. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do, and I've already gone here, is to go to Chrome uh, colon forward slash forward slash extensions. So this is basically just gonna uh, open up the extensions on your Chrome that are installed right now. As you can see here, I have a bunch of random stuff, but what I'm interested in is Betaflight Configurator. So I've already gone ahead and uh, I already have Betaflight installed here, the new configurator 3.2, but that's no problem. We're gonna update it anyway. So the first thing you're gonna do here is just delete your current Betaflight configurator, get it removed, and make sure that you have developer mode enabled at the top here of uh, your Chrome. Uh, that's gonna allow you to do the next step. So the next thing you're gonna do is go to the Betaflight configurator Git repository. And I'm gonna have links for all this stuff for you guys so that you don't have to be hunting around. So you come here to the Betaflight configurator and you're, what you're gonna do is basically download the latest from this little button right here that says Planar Download. You're gonna hit download as zip. So that's gonna get you a fresh copy of Betaflight as it sits right now on master, which is the latest code base they have that is working. So we're gonna open this thing up here. And as you can see, there is a folder here called Betaflight Configurator Master. I am gonna just drag this thing to my desktop because I tend to do this quite a bit and I'm always updating it. So we're just gonna drag it right there. Boom, we're good to go. Now we're gonna open up our uh, Chrome again and we're gonna go into the extensions where we were just at and we're literally just gonna drag and drop that Betaflight Configurator Master folder that we just extracted and we're just gonna go and it's gonna say drop to install and you let it go. There it is. So that part is easy. We have 3.2.2 Configurator installed on our Chrome and it should be good to go. All right, so now here comes the fun part. So what we're gonna do next here is connect the uh, flight controller to the USB on the on the computer so that we can start the flashing process. And after we flash, I'm gonna show you guys how I configure it. So I'm just connecting it here to the USB, just like that. It's gonna turn on, now pressing the boot button or anything like that, it's just ready to go. I'm just gonna put it aside here in front of me and the desk. And we are going to open up Betaflight Configurator. So now as you can see, Configurator 10, now well, that's interesting. So as we can see here, Betaflight is updated and it now says Configurator 10. I'm not sure why it says Configurator 10. It used to say 3.2.2, but I know that this is coming from the latest Configurator Master, so we're pretty safe in using this right now. It's even telling me right now what firmware we are connected to right now, which is a BF, BTFL 3.1.7 Target CL Racing F4. So it's all correct. We have it right here. I'm moving it around. As you can see, it's moving there on the screen. So that's fine. We're not going to worry too much about what's going on here because it's on 3.1.7. We're just going to jump up to CLI, and since it's 3.1.7, I'm pretty sure the command to set it into DFU mode is DFU. So if we do that, oh, well, didn't work. So sometimes you gotta do it a couple times. So I'm gonna unplug it and plug it back in here on my computer. We're gonna try that operation one more time. Connect, CLI, DFU, perfect. So now we got it into DFU mode. Uh, if you have problems getting into DFU mode, you might need to use Zadig, Z-A-D-I-G. And uh, it's basically just a piece of software that allows you to install a USB driver over top of the STM32 bootloader, which allows you to connect it here and use it. In my case, it's already working, so I don't have to worry about it. So we're in DFU mode, we're gonna go to firmware flasher. And here's the important part. Basically, you just have to pick the board here that matches yours. So in my case, I am the CL Racing F4. This guy right here, do not grab this one here if you're on CL Racing F4, this one is not correct. Grab this one right here. Just make sure you match it to your board. Next, I'm gonna pick the 3.2.1, which is the latest stable. We're good to go there. I'm gonna make sure that I do a full chip erase right here. 
And that's pretty much it. I don't mess around with baud rate unless you have trouble with flashing or you're flashing something older. And uh, I don't really typically mess with uh, no reboot sequence. That seems to be no problem. I just do a full chip erase every time. So we're gonna load the firmware online because we already have it available right there. So we have 3.2.1, it's loaded, good to go. Now we're just gonna tell it to flash. So it's just gonna do its thing here. And when we get back, we're gonna do a little bit of configuration. Okay, so now it's saying here programming successful and my board is flashing back again like it's booted. So that's good to go. So what I'm gonna do first is disconnect it here to give it a chance to basically reboot. We're gonna connect it one more time here. And now we're gonna connect it on Betaflight and we're gonna continue on with our setup. So I'm just gonna walk you guys through a typical setup that I do on my quads and, and what it is. So the first uh, screen you're gonna to come to here is a setup screen, which basically shows you your quad. So here you can test the orientation of your quad. Always make sure to test the orientation of your quad. If for whatever reason the quad is not responding in the direction that you think it should be, then you're gonna to have to adjust your flight controller's uh, offsets in the next screen uh, or in the configuration screen when I'll get to that in a sec. So, the first thing that I always do is I go to ports, and in the case of my flight controller on the CL Racing F4, I need to set the Serial RX on the UART1 on so that I can get my uh, SBUS receiver to work. You have to make sure that you check on your manual which port you need to open in Serial RX to do that. So, I leave USB VCP alone, leave that alone, because that's what communicates with your computer via the USB port. You don't want to touch that, just leave it as it is. So, set the UART, save and reboot. It's going to take you right back to setup and we're gonna move on to the configuration screen. Oh, I don't have it set to auto connect, so here we go. All right, so we did that. We can check our orientation here again, everything's fine. So we go on to configuration. So the important things here are basically like what kind of quad are you building? In this case, and most people are gonna be doing just the quad X and I would recommend you leave it at that. If you have some other weird motor arrangement or something like that, you might change it here like the quad plus. You can also set your motor direction as reversed in this nice little uh, toggle right here. So for you guys who run uh, props out, so you just reverse your uh, your ESCs so that they're opposite as to what they're normally in, and then you just check this guy over here and you don't have to worry about your yaw, everything is gonna work as it should. So in my case, I'm gonna leave these alone. Then next, I come over here to motor features. I know that the ESCs that I'm gonna be using on this build are gonna be DSHOT 600, so I'm gonna set that up, DSHOT 600, and I'm gonna leave pretty much everything else as it is. I don't really touch much of the DSHOT settings here. If you, for whatever reason, had your quad on that screen where you're seeing it move around and it wasn't moving like you expected, you might wanna do some adjustments here on the board and sensor alignment. Most of the time, you just have to change yaw to accommodate for the rotation of your uh, flight controller. You just have to check for a little arrow on it that tells you what front is in terms of your flight controller and then adjust accordingly. Uh, over here we have the system configuration which is basically just like well, how fast you want this uh, gyro and PID loop to run. So in my case since this is an F4 I usually run 8.8 and in my case I typically turn off accelerometer because I don't use it. There's no use for it to me at all. So I'll just leave that off. If you want to use barometer and magno magnometer that's up to you. I don't usually use that stuff. It's not really my thing. I usually give my craft a name. I do not use camera degrees. This is if you're using like a, a mix for doing perfect flips and rolls. I don't really use that stuff, so I just ignore it. Now here's the important stuff, the receiver. So it's already gonna have pre-selected serial-based receiver because we selected serial RX. And we can go over here and select our uh, protocol, in my case, SBUS. I'm gonna leave that there, SBUS. Then we get here to all the nice features. And they've put a lot of the features out here in nice little toggles, which makes it so much easier than hopping into CLI and having to type all that stuff up. So in my case, I'm not gonna use OSD, I'm gonna turn it off. Uh, I am gonna use air mode, I am gonna use anti-gravity, and I recommend you guys use both of these if you wanna have the most authority over your quad and to correct any sort of like bobbing behavior. Because basically, uh, what ends up happening a lot of times, one second, let me grab a quad, Aha, here it is, boom. All right, so what happens a lot of times is you're flying along and everything's fine, and then you like throttle up and down really quickly and your quad will like dip, or it will bob up or something like that. Usually you fix that with anti-gravity. So you have to have it set as a mode, and that's why I always leave mine on, and then I change the gain later on. Dynamic filter, that's also another thing that if you're running an F3 at the very minimum, at least some F3s can do it, but definitely if you're running an F4, use dynamic gyro notch. It is very helpful because it dynamically tunes your notch filter so it is able to change to a degree and adjust your setup as it degrades or as your props get damaged and it operates in the lower band of the notch filtering. So definitely look into using this, it's, it's very useful. 
all your beeper configurations all nice and, and displayed right here in 3.2.2 configurator. And I go ahead and turn everything off because I hate beepers. I don't really care. So everything goes off. Boom, 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 boom. Awesome. Now we can save and reboot. And a part of that setting is already all done and ready to go. So we already did. Oh, make sure you enable expert mode too. So we already did our configuration. That's good to go. The next thing that I usually do is set up the receiver. So in the receiver tab here, you can set, you can check all the throws on your sticks to make sure that they're corresponding to the values that you need and everything else. I don't have my receiver on right now and there's no re uh, receiver power to this uh, flight controller right now. So I'm just gonna do it from what I always do. So the first thing I set to here is the stick low. I like to set mine to 1020 and the stick high I like to set to 2000. My dead band is usually about 10. That's what works for me. And you guys are just gonna set up whatever works for you guys. So that pretty much takes care of that. The next thing I like to do is usually set up mode. In my case, all I do is set up the arm mode to auxiliary three, which is what corresponds to my switch on my on my radio. So you have to figure out what it is on yours. And uh, there's all sorts of new features in here too that you can do on a switch, like beeper, OSD disable switch. Uh, you can do your FPV angle mix, which is the angle camera that I mentioned earlier in the configuration tab. Uh, eraser black box, and they're going to be adding camera controls too, which is pretty sweet. Uh, so if you have one of the one of the flight controls that supports having a camera control, you can already start using it on 3.2.2 which is pretty awesome. But in my case, I like to keep things simple. So this is all I'm gonna do. Next thing I like to do is set up my fail safe. And in my case, I only really use the one stage fail safe and all I wanted to do is to die. So to do that, I set my arm switch to a thousand, which basically disarms my quad and the whole thing comes crashing to the ground. I do not like using two stage uh, fail safe because I feel like that's too much time and something worse could go wrong. So I prefer to just have my quad die out if it for whatever, whatever reason gets out of my control. So we did the receiver, we did the fail safe, we're good there. And the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, do my rates. So I always set up my rates before I go out and tune. So you do that on the PID tuning tab right over here. And uh, basically, I don't touch the PID section over here until I go actually out and fly. But I do set my RC rate, super rate, and my RC expo based on what I always use on my quads. So in this case, it's 1.43 RC rate. 0.77 on the super rate and 0.2 on expo and I use the same values on all axes because I like to have all my axes behave the same that's just how I like to fly everybody likes to fly a little bit differently some people like more degrees per second others less and others like to change it up with the axes so whatever works for you is whatever works for you and that's fine so I always set this stuff up here and I always set up my anti-gravity to about 2.5 usually because I find if I set it any less than that the maiden flight is usually a complete piece of crap so I just set mine to 2.5 and it seems to be a good average. Usually I end up bumping it a little bit more depending on the motors that I'm using and so on, but 2.5 seems to be a good starting point, at least for me. And I don't usually touch TPA throttle or throttle expo unless during tuning I find it necessary. So let's save that and let's check out here the filter settings. Now this page here I love because I've been playing around with the filters for a little while now and this just makes everything so much easier. So. I'm not gonna recommend you do this right away for every build. You should probably follow a process in which you turn off filter by filter and then do a quick test flight to see how warm your motors get. But I've been using the same type of components for quite a while now and I've come to know them very well. So I know that when I do a fresh build of these components, I can pretty much guarantee that I can disable the notch filters and fly perfectly fine because that's what's happened for the last probably seven or eight builds. So instead of wasting my time in doing those little flights, I just disable these things right away before I even build the thing. So when I do the maiden, it's already pretty damn close to the tune that I want. I just play around the PID gains and everything's good to go. So how I do that? I usually go here and I set it to PT1 on the D-term low pass filter. Uh, PT1 low pass filter allows you to get much better P gains and a much softer and smoother flight. So I definitely recommend you use that as long as your motors can take it. Do a quick flight with PT1 and check your motor temperature to see if it's not too high. If it's getting too high, definitely go back to bike quad. I also turn off gyro notch filter one and two. The right thing to do would be to tune these and actually like go out and fly it and get some black box data and then tune them. But here's the thing that notch is going to change with time. As your motors degrade, as your build degrades, as other things happen, as you crash, that's going to change. So you're going to have to be doing this over and over. I've found pretty good performance, at least on clean new builds, by turning these off and just trusting dynamic notch filters. So you can try that out and see if it works for you. It has worked great for me to just turn these two off, put PT1 on, and trust the dynamic filters. And one more thing before we move along, this is very important. 
especially if you're using PT1 and no notch filters. Oh, and by the way, do not touch the D-turn notch. This one is kind of dangerous. If you have this off and you break prop, you could fairly easily blow out a motor. So I would recommend you leave this pretty much as it is. Um, one thing you want to do is if you're using PT1 and uh, notch one and two off is knock down your D gain. And I'm going to put mine to about 15 because when I go to maiden this thing, I know that 35 is going to be too much and it's going to make my quad turkey call the whole time, especially with by blades. So that's something that I've found. So knock your D gains down. It's not going to hurt anything. If anything, it's going to save your motors and it's probably going to be a better maiden, at least if you're on by blades. So that pretty much covers it for the, the PID tuning page. Um, power and battery is not something that I've messed much with unless you have OSD, but here it allows you to tell you which, where you want your battery sensors to be reading, set all your, uh, <clears throat> all your offsets and so on. I don't really care about this stuff because I do not use OSD. I fly literally through feel and nothing else, so I don't care about this at all. I'm sorry, I'm not going to explain to you guys how to use it. Uh, it should be fairly straightforward. I think I'm sure you guys can figure it out. Uh, receiver we already covered, modes were already covered, um, adjustments is not something that I've ever had to touch, so I'm pretty much going to ignore that. Motors, since uh, D-Shot has come out, I barely ever touched this at all, but it's remained largely unchanged. So if you need to do your calibration for multi-shot or anything like that, you can still do it as per normal using this very familiar screen. Uh, sensors, again, pretty similar to what you have over here, it hasn't really changed much, you can uh, change which ones you want to see and so on. Black box, now this one here has been cleaned up a little bit. It allows you to select where and how you want it to, to, to store your black box. And in my case, I can just send it to this SD card, set up the rate and then save and reboot and you'd be pretty much good to go. I find it much easier to manage uh, boot logs with, uh, with black box logs with the SD card. So I highly recommend you get a flight, uh, flight controller that has one if you're interested in doing this sort of thing. And other than that, CLI continues to be the good old CLI and uh, it still works just as you expected. It's just that a lot of the stuff that you used to have to go through the CLI to do, uh, the nice devs at Betaflight have brought out to the forefront. So it's a lot easier to uh, to manage it from this, from this area right here. Anyway guys, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you guys. It was just a quick like how to flash your board onto 3.2.1, how to get the 3.2.2 configurator on your computer so that you can start configurations and start tuning your quads. There's nothing really groundbreaking here except for maybe the nice filter settings over there where you had the nice toggles. I really like that. It just makes life easier. So it's a lot of niceties that are, are really going to make it faster for you to set up your quads. Uh, other than that, performance on 3.2 has been fantastic, so if you're still on 3.1.7, I highly recommend that you move on over to 3.2.1 because this shit flies freaking great, man. It's amazing. So throw on some PT1 on that stuff, and uh, honestly, like it, it's so nice. All the latest videos that you guys have seen, have seen here from the channel where it looks like it's all of a sudden and flying super smoothly, it's seriously beta flight. That thing is like rock solid. So guys, as always, I hope this helps you guys out and I hope uh, you learned something here today that was useful. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.